And uh, now it gives me great pleasure to invite Dr. Monica Singh. And because I have interviewed her once before, and that was such an enlightening and such a journey of learning about how she has managed to sort of integrate not only the art of looking after young mothers, guiding them, but the energetic and the energy power that is there, the spiritual power and all the other needs that a person does not think about is all part of it. So welcome Dr. Monica Singh once again. It's a pleasure to have you here, but let me just tell the people a little bit about you. Dr. Monica Singh is a practicing obstetrician and sonologist practicing for over 22 years. A visionary and founder of Prakhar Manav, the enlightened human, she has delivered more than 10,000 babies and counting. She's also the founder of Birth the New Earth, LLP, speaker and internationally published author of the anthology Miracle Mission and Awakening in Womb. Birth the New Earth is her latest venture for conscious conception, pregnancy, and parenting coaching. It is based on an evolutionary shift in pregnancy and pregnancy paradigm from a traditional birthing process to the awakening in the womb, a birthing process, assisting the evolution of human consciousness from the third dimension to the fifth dimension. Dr. Monica is also on a mission to fuse ancient spiritual birthing techniques with modern scientific methods. She is an ardent student of life on a mission to spread awareness about the power that a couple holds to blueprint the subconscious of their unborn, teaching them tools and techniques to harness their own power with consciousness. With her years of practice, she has carried out intensive research on the subject of blueprinting the subconscious of your unborn. In the process, she has come across miraculous results. She has now a growing number of what she calls walking, talking, miracle babies. She has been honored with the iconic Woman Creating a Better World for All Award by the Women Economic Forum 2017. Dr. Monica has recently been invited by Dr. Marisa Pai, the Asian opera from California, for her show, Balance for Life. She has been a keynote speaker and presenter for various national and international conferences. Today, she will share her thoughts on wellness during menage and menopause. She will be connecting the emotional impact of shifts in the hormonal axis during menarche and menopause with a few metaphysical aspects of these changes. It's going to be incredible, let me tell you. So Monica, the stage is yours. All the best to you. Wow. <laughs> Thank you so much, Aarti. It's uh, for such an elaborate introduction. But before that, thank, thank you so much, Asman, for inviting me over and giving this opportunity that I can reach out to people on this topic. And indeed, as Arti mentioned earlier, that song was mesmerizing. I just dissolved into that song and I just forgot what's going to happen. And yes, we had to remind ourselves to come back. So congratulations. Atman, this was such a hidden talent of yours. <laughs> it was... Okay. <laughs> this was a mind. Uh, it's sung by uh, Noreen Pereira and uh, Newton Pereira. They are our students and um, amazing talents. <laughs> and the music was channeled. The music, the words, everything. But uh, singing, uh, not me. <laughs> I can whisper. Yeah, I that, but that, that soul was so immense. <laughs> and now, you. coming to Menarche to menopause. Well, uh, all my beautiful ladies here, I'll just go to gallery more and see how many of, yeah. To all my beautiful ladies and gents who are here, who have wives, who have daughters, uh, the young girls, women, 
uh, you would all be touched by these two aspects of life, menarche and then menopause. So it's, this topic is not just for women. Uh, this is also equally important for men because they would have a perspective for what's going into the woman's life that uh, they are a part, who they are a part of. So um, what I've decided is, like I, I thought that this was the best thing. I structured this talk into three parts, as much as structuring is possible. Uh, the initial 10 minutes, I'll be giving the medical perspective of it. Um, in between around 30, 35 minutes, we'll talk on the energetic part, the mind part, the emotional part, and a bit of metaphysics. And the later 15 minutes, we'll keep for a Q&A session. We'll keep a Q&A session in which if you have any queries, please uh, feel free to note them down and then put them in the chat box. And I would love to address them um, with the best of my effort. Now, this topic is a very intense topic of emotional um, surges and downs and emotions during menarche and menopause. Medically, menarche and menopause are considered to be two distinct events of one's life. However, if you see it, see it from a aerial perspective, menarche and menopause are two sides of the same coin. So let me uh, just decipher it. When we say menarche, it is men plus arche. So men in Latin would mean months and arche is initiation. It is the starting of something. And menopause is men plus pause. The month plus pause, the cessation of something. So it is that one cycle, it starts and it comes down. It's like the two sides of the same, the two ends of the same thread. And therefore uh, they come with their own ups and downs of emotions and stress and all of that, which we are going to touch later on. Now, sticking to the medical part, is it's, it's all about the hormones. So menarche is that point. So menarche medically is the first menstrual period that a girl would have and menopause is the last. It is the, uh, the cessation of this entire cycle. Now, this is also a very important mark in one's lifespan. So um, around 12% of one's life would be spent before Menarche, around 40% of the life will be spent between menarche and menopause, and around 40% of one's life would be spent after menopause. So ladies, just share out. Menopause is just the time that you've spent reproducing kids, you've uh, spent raising them from menarche to menopause, and equal amount of time will be spent after the periods have stopped, the menopause has been attained. So it's a, it's, it's a beautiful time in one's life and one is absolutely free and ready to move and conquer the world. Now, so of course, uh, this entire biochemistry happens at levels of hypothalamus and pituitary and then ovaries. We have follicle stimulating hormone, all the hormones, estrogen, progesterone, adrenals, they all come into play. There are the surges uh, because of which the reproduction happens and all of that. However, now we are going to come back. We are going to now talk about the real thing. But this was all superficial. This was like medical and what a doctor would tell you, extremely brief. Like I've not even touched the depth of it uh, because uh, physiology is the representation of what's going inside of us energetically. As menarche, during menarche, there is a lot of body changes happening. Budding of the breast, occurring of the secondary sexual characters are coming. Similarly, as the body is expanding and changing, a lot of changes are happening in the mind, the mental body, and the emotional body. The mental body and the emotional body changes would be directly proportional and reflection of 
the body changes and more than that how are these bodily changes perceived how a person is perceiving the shift in the physical body is going to directly impact the mental emotional state so it is not about the change itself it is more so about the perception of the change and then leading to however one is perceived now mind is something mind is an enigma mind loves complex things mind loves entanglements mind love anything which is super difficult to solve you know we get hooked to something which is challenging anything which is simple mind would say let's leave it not for me now what's happening essentially here is how would this young girl at the age of so menarche would come nowadays menarche has dropped down to age of 6 age of 7 menarche is happening at age of i have people little children of 8 9 years walking in with menarche so in our menarche can hit anywhere between the age of 6 years to 16 years now and the menopause menopause would typically hit between uh the age of 45 years to 54 years so even if you are 53 right now you are having your menstrual cycle no worries medical science says it's okay to have your periods until 54 now when this girl a, a child of say around 10 years has her first period for her it's a shock because this girl is not prepared for it probably she's heard something from her peers but nothing from an authority figure in her life like parents or teachers she doesn't know what this is so she has all the stories and imaginations in her mind but she certainly knows that sexuality is a taboo she can't talk about sexuality she cannot talk about her periods openly and this is the very reason now this girl starts retreating because she knows something has happened in my life which is not correct perhaps and which i can't talk so openly about i can perhaps talk to my mom sister someone but i can't so openly talk about this topic in public so i'm already putting a boundary on itself i'm i'm putting it under the carpet and in some shelf this is the point when this girl would first time feel i am not enough there is something wrong with me or there is something which is confining me this is something that i can't just go out and talk about it's a secret so now this girl is perceiving all this as a secret and she is told that okay if you have your period don't make a um, it's nothing it happens to everyone and just put a pad and all of that now the a sense of why this period is happening is not explained to her and what could happen to her because of this period is also missed and this girl is uh, the most of the children are i would say children because it's happening at at the age of 9 years 10 years now and they're clueless of what's happening in their life and sometimes the flow is so much that they don't know how to manage it and when there is a spot on their clothes they are like now nah, i need to hide it i really need to hide it but if in another part of your body bleeds it's cut then the people there to help you stop the bleeding oh my god what but this bleeding she can't talk about because it's a it's it's taboo still so we are, we are advancing as a society but this is that particular uh, part of our society which has been conveniently left um, and somehow you know put under some some shelf that we don't need to address it what's happening in this girl's mind is also the reflection of how menarche and menopause was perceived by mother and mother's mother because now we have epigenetics in the play if the family was vocal about uh, sexuality if the family was comfortable talking about menses and periods and menstrual cycles then this child perhaps will not have so much of an issue but if it was a conservative society a closed one then it will be difficult for this child to speak epigenetically if you talk like uh, from the subconscious mind perspective of how the subconscious mind imprints are transferred from one generation to another third so epigenetics talks typically about three generations 
So it's grandma, mother, and now this child. This entire imprinting system is bracketed in these three generations. It is not just the mother because mother is also under the impact of how it was with her mom. So emotionally, Minarke could be suppressing. Minarke could be confining. This girl is asked not to go for sports so much, not to run around so much, watch herself during her periods, uh, see if there is no spot on the bed sheet that she's sleeping on or uh, her uniform. So uh, suddenly this child is very conscious of herself. Now, this, this also, this may, not, not always, certainly, this may also become the capping of emotions of this girl. Because this is also the time when this child is undergoing the sexual changes. The sexuality is coming up because the puberty is hit. Her uh, breasts are budding and all of that is happening. She is getting those curves and those hormones are playing, the oxytocin is playing and she's attracted to boys now and all of that. And then she said, no, it's wrong. Shh, don't talk about it. And this is when they start reading mills and wounds and all of that. And there's a lot of imagination and there's a lot of uh, curiosity on this. And mostly the girls are talking about it within themselves. But now I would request all the moms here, whatever age you are, all the ladies here, whatever age you are, whenever you get an opportunity to talk a girl, to talk to a girl who's 10, 11, try to talk about her relationship with her menstruation, her relationship with her periods, her relationship with her own sexuality. And you'll discover as much as the girl looks confident, she is also not so much so in this, uh, this particular area of her life. What could be the metaphysical aspect of this? The girls for whom menarche was a huge issue in their life, who suppressed themselves, who went down, probably would encounter sexuality related issues in their future life. Because subconsciously they've talked to themselves, it's not right, it's not good. And they try to keep off the partners, even after the marriage or they're into a committed relationship. For them to be absolutely free becomes uh, sometimes taxing, sometimes challenging. Or, or this can tweak into an extreme of not being able to remain in a committed, secure relationship, changing partners often, trying sexuality. Now, because it was an extreme suppression, these children, these females are rebels. Now they want to prove to the world that I can do whatever I want. I can have 10 boyfriends. I can just do whatever I want. I want to just experience sexuality. So both extremes are unserving to this woman. On one side, she is facing and countering. I have these people walk into my OBD chamber who are not able to have the physical bliss in the marriage, who are not able to give themselves completely sexually. They are confined. And on the other hand, we have these girls who are say, I don't care, it's okay. I mean, I wouldn't mind if I have a boyfriend for six months and let me just be. These are the two reflections, extreme reflections of some inhibition, some suppression at the point of menarche. So whenever, this situation is experienced and encountered in people. We've got to go down to two major timelines. Timeline one is menarche. And timeline two is mom's timeline, how this was with her. And perhaps you can also probe into the timeline three, which is the grandmother's, um, grandmother's timeline. The grandmother's timeline is not going to have an effect of more than 10%, mom maybe 20, 30%, but majority is the 60 to 70%
of the effect is how the onset of sexuality and puberty was perceived by this girl. So this is about the menarche journey. Now, once the periods have set in and they're regular, they're happening month after month, and she's nicely entered her reproductive um, bracket, and fast forward to the children and everything, fast forward to menopause. Now, all these years, the menstruation becomes such an integrated part of one's life that now it starts happening, the acceptance has happened at the subconscious mind level. As much as menarche was an episode, menopause becomes an equally important episode. Like now the females say, oh my God, menar uh, menopause is going to hit me and it's going to be difficult and uh, I'm going to lose on my sexuality. My body's going to sag. Uh, my my eyesight is going to get weakened. My hair quality will go down. My bone strength would not be there. My sexual drive would reduce. How my marriage is going to be. And maybe I would be less of a woman. Because menarche and menopause have somehow been associated with being a great female. So less than 12, you are a child, and after menopause, I know what, <laughs> what do we call ourselves. But after menopause, certainly, this woman is going to bloom more because now she doesn't have the hassle of changing her pad every day, every month. However, this is again the perception. How the physical body, the sexuality, the mental state which uh, which which could lead to mood swings and anxiety and all of that and the emotional state which could lead to depression which could lead to emotional uh, emotional problems all of this is not because of menopause it is not because of where your estrogens are or where your progesterones are or uh, where your other androgens are it is not because of the biochemistry. It is because of the effect of biochemistry on the body and how this effect is perceived. If the female would perceive menopause as a point of liberation, like I'm done with this part. I'm free now. I can just fly. Because most of the duties are over. Kids are settled. They're married or they're in the colleges. They're on their own. But this is the best time of the life. So if this phase is perceived with this inside, then you will see the glow on this girl's face. The lady is going to glow. She is, she is going to uh, start doing some, she's going to engage, her, engage herself with some hobby that she left long back. And her life is only going to go on this particular graph because the amount of days and years spent from menarche to menopause are exactly the days she's going to spend from menopause until she's living. It's a it's a big time, it's a huge time. So now why again we are going to come to the energetic part first and then the metaphysical part. Energetically, we've addressed how it is perceived. So if you see menopause at complex, menopause at hormonal shift, oh my god, I stuck with menopause and my bones are weak now. And uh, after taking medicine, maybe HRT, which is hormonal replacement therapy and all of that, I have to do this, that, then definitely menopause is a disease for you. You're stuck in menopause. You will have hot flushes because you're thinking about it. There would be osteoporosis. However, if you think it from a different perspective, your biochemistry is not dependent on your biochemistry is affected again by your thought. Your thought is not, your biochemistry is not commanding your thoughts. Your thoughts are commanding your biochemistry. So how you are perceiving is going to have effect on the biochemistry axis of the body. And this biochemical axis is going to affect the physical body changes. Of course. But how it is perceived? My estrogens have gone down. Progestins have gone down. 
menopause, my ovaries are shr shrinking, my uterus is collapsed, um, it's going into a degeneration. That means I'm aging. So my biochemistry is all haywired, it's down, down slow. So my thought is I'm aging and my manifestation is I'm aging. If I have an absolutely turnaround on this and I say, wow, this is the best time of life, I'm free. I'm actually free and I can fly. Then your biochemistry is in place because your thoughts are always affecting your biochemistry. Your pituitary is secreting your LHF and FSH. However, your pituitary is in command under the command of hypothalamus. And the hypothalamus gland here, the, the thoughts are affecting your hypothalamus from which it is affecting your pituitary and hence from pituitary, your ovaries are affected. See how this cycle works. It is not ovaries to thought, it is thought to ovaries actually. And this is the power. This is the empowerment. So if you own it and you have a different perspective and different view, you command your biochemistry, you command your menopause. And then you say, wow, I'm gonna have a second innings of my life uh, where I can actually do stuff that I've not done so far in my life. And it's, it's a great thing. Metaphysically, if we talk, how exactly and why certain people would have all those emotional turmoil, they will have hot flashes, they will have mood swings, they would have sleepless nights, they would have tired dreams. There are people who become so depressive and anxiety prone, they have to be on pills. I have patients who, uh, they, who need sleeping pills during the menopause. And they have to be administered with a lot of vitamin D3 and calcium and primose oil and everything and all of that. And uh, sometimes even HRT. Why? Because we have to push their biochemistry. This is the point where a female is thinking, something is wrong with me. I'm losing it on. Perhaps I'm losing on my sexuality and being a female itself. Metaphysically. Menopause only means evolution and getting more mature in your life. You've had all the experiences that you needed in life with respect to partners, marriage, husband, in-laws, society, children, their, uh, the children's friends and boyfriends and spouses and kids if they're there, all of that. You've got all the experiences. Most empowered woman is the woman in, who is in her 50s because she has the wisdom, she has the experience, she has the knowledge, and she also has health on her side. She's ready to conquer the world now. So if this woman feels and thinks that menopause is the time from where I'm going to fly, trust me, her biochemistry is always going to be under her control and domain. And the deep subconscious mind reason of all the metaphysical changes and all the metaphysical turmoils and shifts one is perceiving is directly proportional and related to how menarche was perceived. Because you remember menarche and menopause, they both are the two sides of the same coin. How this was, how this happened would, ref would reflect how menopause would be. So if the menarche was challenging, if menarche was associated with a lot of acne and low self-image and anger issues and frustration and meditation, you would see that that would come back. So if someone is in 30s and 40s and 50s, someone's late 40s and 
uh, early 50s, someone is hitting menopause, my suggestion here would be to go back to the time of menarche, to do some inner child work, re-switch that, reprogram your inner child, reprogram your menarche, and you will see your menopause is beautiful now. And then menopause is no more an event in your life. It is just, you know, one slow. And it's like a wave. It's just coming and going and now I'm done. I'm not even swimming in that time. It becomes effortless. So it's amazing to work on these principles. Before I move on, I would love to answer if we have any questions. If there are any questions, I would love to answer them, or else we'll move on. Uh, I have a question, uh, Monica. Yeah. Uh, on behalf of others, I'm sure it must be in their mind. Uh, because we were not aware of this um, brilliant and insightful understanding that you have given us right now, if all of us, decide to do soul's love or R5 statement for menarche because these were beliefs that were thrust upon us, right? Mm -hmm. And these were thoughts that were put into our minds and we made that our belief system and moved with it. And then in menopause, it affected us because we thought this is the end of the world. So will soul's love recitation and R5 statements be a big help in this? Of course. Also, yeah. But one All right. So they we can just, yeah, we can just, each one of us can define our own uh, our statements based on our individual experiences, correct? 100%. It yeah, it doesn't have to be a template, right? It doesn't have to be a template. Other than that, it's just said, know what to our find. So, uh, the statement for uh, soul's love and keep on reciting them for a month, for 21 days. And if you're in the menopause, you will see it's become very easy. And more than that, if you could connect with that child, that person who was facing the turmoils of menarche, you know, with that girl who mom told that any spot, any blood spot on the uniform skirt is not to be shown to others. It's demeaning. It's not done. And when the boys make fun of it, the girls make fun of it. And this girl is hiding in the toilet, school toilet somehow. You remember those times when, what do I do? And they would be chalk. And uh, they would put chalk on the spot. It should not be shown to someone. It was seen with such conservation. Connect yeah. with that, that child. And uh, I think it would be resolved. And followed by our five state and... Wonderful, wonderful. I think it's a big insight for all of us that work with inner child on that and do our five statements as Dr. Monica has just suggested. Uh, there's a question from Naveena in the group, in the chat. Uh, yeah. Monica, if you can read. Okay, sure. I'll just open. Naveena, if, even if Menarche was not a good experience, but we change our thought process now, as you shared, will we be able to still sail through menopause easily 100%? Because the root of menopause is in menarche. So when the root is nicely nourished and nurtured with nice fertilizers there, the fruit is going to be awesome. And menarche is the fruit of, sorry, menopause is the fruit of menarche. So you nourish menarche, your menopause is good. I invariably ask people who come to me for menopausal issues how the menarche was. And it's um, I've never had any patient who said that my menarche was flawless and I'm having a terrible menopause. Menopause also is flawless if the menarche was flawless. It's always the case. There are not two distinct episodes, two sides of the same coin. Okay, this is not the question. What if the person has not felt fulfilled and who are single or divorced or widows, how do they handle the phase 
of menopause? Amazing question. And I would love to answer this. See, menopause, uh, menarche essentially happens for reproduction. It is, uh, it would, the puberty would hit for the sexual expression. And if the sexual expression could not happen, then there is a subconscious mind belief system for low self-image because becoming a mother is an inherent subconscious mind desire. Our logic would say, no, it's not with me, but subconsciously through generations and ancestors and how the progeny is and how human race progresses, it is in our DNA that we enhance our progeny, that we reproduce. Now, when once this is not done or even the sexual act has not happened, then uh, there could be two possibilities for menopause. Possibility A, it could be uneventful because I'm now here it is like i'm not bothered of this period whether they are not they are there or not i don't know what sexuality is i don't um, I, I just don't know i don't recognize sexuality now when this is the case menopause menopause would just go it would just go there is no entanglement however when there is a conscious mind urge which was suppressed there were desires which were unfulfilled as uh, in case of a divorce or being a widow or however, whatever, whatever the reason, then menopause will not be so difficult. However, the menopause would stretch for a long time because the mind is not ready to let go of this desire. There's a difference. So it's not like a six-month menopause and I'm anxious and everything, tuck, 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 tuck. And then six months of periods are off and one year, I'm fine. Hot flush is gone. My D3 is good. B12 good. I'm great. No. Here, the menopause would be a long phase. So it would not be a peak of extreme anxiety, depression, or extreme uh, expression of menopause, all, all the symptoms of menopause. However, there would be some rough patches, but they would keep on going, 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 going. Like the menopause would happen at the age of 54, 53 started at 50, say 46, 47. And now it's been five years and these symptoms are coming. I'm having, I'm having a dryness in my private parts. I'm having itching, dry itching in my private parts. My hair are fizzy. Uh, my, my secondary sexual uh, characters are all sagging, like breasts are sagging. My, uh, my skin is getting uh, bad. I'm losing my hair. And then it just keeps on going. It's not a terrible thing, but it's prolonged. So this is to answer what, what could happen when uh, uh, the sexual expression is unmet. Now, if we have to come to how we can help here, how to help here. Again, we can do our five statements on acceptance of my unfulfilled desires of sexuality on the soul's love uh, statements of uh, my un my experience of unfulfilled sexuality is my soul's love and all of that so if we can have these statements of soul serves and r5 with respect to all your unfulfilled sexual desires uh, unblissful marriage or whatever experience has been during this phase of reproduction, then perhaps you can shorten this menopause also. Like it would not stretch. So if I've answered this question. That's beautiful, Monica. There are some more in the chat and then I will ask one question on behalf of somebody who's asked me personally, okay? Yes, I will do that. So, thank you. How can we... Positive women are part of conservative families where there are restrictions on religious rituals. How does all these taboos affect them mentally and how to overcome them? You see what, if it's a religious taboo, then tell your daughter, 
uh, if someone is saying the grandmom is saying don't enter the uh, temple or the kitchen or this and that just say darling these five days are your free days go play badminton do whatever you don't have it's your free time so give her a positive perspective of this rather than like you can't enter the kitchen because you have period to sit there in the corner say go out play in the fields enjoy your life you're free you don't have to come to the kitchen do the kitchen ka chores go out so this the perception of menarche itself needs to be changed whatever the reason is and this is in the hands of the mom she can really uh, give a complete turn around to her daughter i'll take another question awesome thank you dani uh great now i want to come to this question of apurva how can we present menarche in a positive light to our children wonderful question so to all the moms who have daughters uh, at and around age of 6 7 8 no if your child is showing budding of uh, secondary sexual characters like budding of breast slight pubic hair know that menarche is going to hit another two years so if there's a little breast enlargement around 9 years 11 years she's going to hit puberty uh, she's going to hit her the have a first menarche it's generally one and a half two years time this is a time when you can mentally prepare her for this period telling her it's a point of empowerment you are going to get that shakti because becoming a mother is a great power motherhood is powerful and this is the first step to motherhood tell your daughter because of your period one day you will become a mother and motherhood is powerful so menarche is empowerment because now you have a power you have that power to bring in that soul you have a power to nurture and nourish your kids you have that power to create a human being inside you it's a great great power to do tell your daughter who's eight because of this when you are 25 plus 29 30 something you will have your child you will have your shakti you will have your power now this child thinks i am powerful it is my strength already her self image has gone to the next level already this is not demeaning and she doesn't have to shut down from the world on this so you have to show empowerment through menarche you have to show blossoming through menarche and also i want to hear uh, i want to add one thing here which is going to add a lot of value how your daughter perceives your menarche will reflect on her skin if she is perceiving this as an episode of freedom as an episode of um empowerment she will not have those acne issues also because the self low self image is not going to be there there would not be any hidden anger that need to spurt out through acne and all of that acne and all the physical symptoms are the result of perception of what's happening inside so rather than just treating the acne we we got to hit the bottom of from where these acne are coming so to answer the question uh, in in bullet points a tell them that menarche is empowering second tell them that this is the shakti that they're getting the power that they're getting and hence the empowerment third tell them that this is the stepping stone to becoming a mother which is the biggest gift you could give to this world when you're gone and fourth thing which you can tell them is that you're going to turn into a beautiful girl now you will have breast you will have longer hair you will have your curves you will become like a doll she's going to celebrate her sexuality let her celebrate what's going in herself let her be attracted towards being beautiful and not hide herself so this is how you can um prepare your young child and the fathers can prepare the young your father has a great role in preparing her daughter for menarche she the father has to appreciate menarche and celebrate menarche and tell to her daughter that it's a wonderful thing of power she has the daughter is going to bloom because for any daughter dad is an ideal person when dad is validating this girl is a queen 
she is all set to conquer the world. I wish we had more dads here because it's 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 important for a dad to involve in her daughter's sexual growth. It's very important because this gives her that confidence with men. If dad is by my side, appreciating my sexuality, then who the hell? Like I'm just conquering the world. I'm the queen. So uh, parents do a lot uh, for their daughters. Yeah. Celebrate. That's so brilliant. That's so brilliant, Monica. And, and people saying celebrating Manaki, you know, I mean, really, today, I think all of us are feeling uh, sort of empowered. And uh, women who are having younger children will naturally feel now confident and stronger to handle Minarke for their children. Uh, there was a question here sent personally that if you have hysterectomy before uh, age 40, before menopause, basically, how does that impact, uh, you know, uh, our growth, uh, our mental growth further? And then she says that uh, in both cases, when the ovaries are removed and when they are not removed. Okay. I'm, thank you so much for asking this question because I'm going to bust a myth now. I'm going to bust a myth uh, today. Ovaries are just a part of your hormonal axis. They are not two little organs who are completely responsible for your sexual hormones. Okay? So in most of the cases, when we are doing a hysterectomy, we leave the ovaries there. We don't remove the ovaries unless until it is a case for, it's a cancer surgery or something like that, when you do a dime surgery or something like that. When it is typically removed before 40, and it is not a case of a CA, which is cancer, it could be because of DUB or endometritis or fibroids usually, then invariably the ovaries are left. This is a medical protocol. We never ever remove them. However, when the hysterectomy is done after the age of 55 years, when menopause has already hit, and you know there is a, uh, your CA-125 is elevated or there's something in the MRI or the CT scan, there's some lesion there. When we are speculating a future cancer, it is then when we remove the uterus and tubes and the ovaries. So first of all, to remove both ovaries, before 40 is an extreme situation, which is uh, which would happen only if it was a case of CA. So it's not general. So ovaries are always going to be there. So when ovaries are there, see your hypothalamus is there, it's not removed. So your DNRH is being uh, secreted. So pituitary is there. So FSH LH is being secreted. And now the ovaries are there. So estrogen progesterones are also there. And adrenals are above the kidneys. So they're always secreting androgens. So all your hormones have been secreted. Uterus is only a bag to keep the baby. Bag is removed, the rest, everything is there. Nothing goes. Nothing will go. One. Second, if in extreme cases, ovaries are to be removed before menopause, then we remove one ovary and leave one ovary there. This itself is an extreme rare case. If in the extreme of the extreme rare cases, if we need to remove both ovaries, then you know you have pituitary gland here. So follicle stimulating hormone is there. And uh, uh, luteinizing hormone is being secreted. So though your sexual female hormones are being secreted. Do not worry so much about... Uh, ovaries now. So this term, this is called as surgical menopause. It is, a, it is a menopause, which is because of the surgery. However, it is only the absence of uterus. That means the flow of blood has stopped. The symptom of reproduction and recurring menstrual cycle has only stopped. However, the entire hormonal cycle is happening as is. Secreting, secretion for hypothalamus is happening, then pituitary is happening, and the ovaries are also secreting. And because of the secretion, the endometrium was getting thicker and being released through the uterus. Now the uterus is not there, so the endometrium thickening and lightening is not being released through menstrual blood. 
So even if hysterectomy has happened, surgical menopause has happened, it's only a terminology. The real menopause will hit only at the age of um, around late 40s only. So even if the woman has had hysterectomy at 35, you will see that she is undergoing all those classical symptoms of heart flashes and irritability and all of that uh, at the age of late 40s, 50s, because this is where now her hormones are shutting, shutting down. Uterus is only the expression of what's happening in my body. Now your body is not expressing. However, everything is still happening. I hope I answered this question. That's amazing. That's really amazing, Monica. And that's the response I have from the person that wow. it has cleared a lot of myths for her. Thank you so much, she's saying. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think there's something in the chat again for you. I sure. I love answering questions. Mind. I think it would be a good idea to educate our sons and teach them to pamper sisters and girlfriends when Manarki is there for a girl. What do you think? Of course, first thing, if there are there's a boy and a girl in the family and a daughter is menstruating, ask the boy to go to the market, a chemist shop and buy a pad, whisper ka packet lekar. Say, give it to your sister. She's menstruating. Let the sister and the brother be ultra comfortable around Menarchian periods. If this boy is completely gathered and not so much out of the world, oh my God, someone is having period, I should be, you know, looking here and there. If he's fine, then he's going to be fine with the girlfriend, with the wife and all the women who have periods uh, when, when he'll be working in the office and colleagues and all of that. So if we've got to make it like, I'm having my food or I'm breathing air. So I'm having my periods. I'm putting on the pad as I'm putting on this cloth. It has to be that easy. And of course, we have to educate our sons as well. So involve your son into the process of your uh, daughters and sisters' menarche journey. Ask him to go by pads for her. It's really interesting. So any more questions for Dr. Monica from anyone? I think, Monica, believe it or not, this has been an overwhelming session for all the women. Thank and so uh, thank you, Atman, for bringing in Monica. I think we need her every time, every day, every place for educating all of us. And thank that you. further education, once they know, all of them here, and news and listeners on YouTube, once they know that Dr. Monica Singh, who combines her scientific skill with so much of spiritual healing, they are going to be here anytime, every time. So thank you, Monica, so much. And uh, gratitude. Thank you. thank you so much, Atman. Thank you so much to all the wonderful ladies and listeners here. Thank you so much for being there and just listening. Thank you so much. My request is to share this video with a lot of friends and relatives, a lot of women. Let there be awareness. Uh, because this is something that everyone really needs, you know, to know and learn. We will also put this uh, on the on the YouTube channel. I'll put uh, Dr. Monica's uh, social media handle in case you would want to consult her ever. Uh, what you do not uh, uh, know, perhaps, she's an author of a lovely book, Awakening in the Womb, and she prepares uh, parents uh, even before the child is born uh, to attract the right soul for themselves. So trust it's going to be amazing experience for all of you. Thank you, Dr. Monica, for taking out Thank this time. Thank and you. Much of a precious and valuable time. Thank you so much. Thank Looking forward to so many beautiful events with you. Oh, yes. Would love that too.